is punishment. It will be a visible punishment, a punishment that tells all, that explains, justifies itself, convicts, place cards, different colored caps, bearing inscriptions, posters, symbols, text read or printed, timelessly repeat the code, um, scenery, perspectives, optical effects, trompe il ale, that's a French word there, sometimes magnifies the scene, making it more fearful than it is, but also clearer. From where the public is sitting, it is possible to believe in the existence of certain cruelties which, in fact, do not take place. But the essential point in all these real or magnified severities <clears throat> is that they should all, according to a strict economy, teach a lesson. That each punishment should be a fable. And that, in counterpoint, with all the direct examples of virtue, one may at each moment encounter, as a living spectacle, the misfortunes of vice. Around each of these moral representations, school children will gather with their masters, and adults will learn what lessons to teach their offspring. The great terrifying ritual of the public execution gives way, day after day, street after street, to the serious theater, with its multifarious and persuasive scenes. And popular memory will reproduce in rumor the austere discourse of the law. But perhaps it will be necessary, above these innumerable spectacles and narratives, to place the major sign of punishment for the most terrible of crimes, the keystone of the penal edifice. In any case, Vermeil had imagined the scene of absolute punishment that should dominate all the theaters of everyday punishment. The only case in which one had to seek to reach an infinity of punishment, something El equiv <laughs> I can't pronounce this. Equivalent. There you go. It was uh, eluding me there. Equivalent in the new penal system to what regis regicide had been in the old. The man found guilty of the crime would have had his eyes pulled out. He would be put into an iron cage suspended in the air above a public square. He would be completely naked. He would be attracted to bars of the cage by an iron belt around his waist to the end of his days. He would be fed on bread and water. Thus, he would be exposed to all the rigorous of the seasons. Sometimes his head would be covered with snow, sometimes burnt by a scorching sun. It is in, it is in this energetic torture presenting rather the extension of a painful death than that of a painful life that would truly recognize a villain or villain deserving of the horror of nature in its entirety condemned to see no longer the heaven that he has outraged and to live no longer on the earth that he has sullied Vermeil 148 9 quote unquote above the punitive city hangs this iron spider and the criminal who is to be thus crucified by the new law is the parricide. P-A-R-R-I-C-I-D-E. Parricide, not prayers. Not parasite. Okay, continuing. There was a whole new arsenal of picturesque punishments. Avoid inflicting the same punishments, said Ma uh, Mabley. The idea of a uniform penalty modulated only according to the gravity of the crime is banished. To be more precise... <clears throat> The use of imprisonment as a general form of punishment is never presented in these projects for specific, visible, and telling penalties. Imprisonment is in vis envisioned, or not envisioned, envisaged, but as one among other penalties, it is a specific punishment for certain offenses. Those that infringe the liberty of individuals, such as abduction, or those that result from an abuse of liberty, disorder, slash, violence. It is also envisaged as a condition to enable certain punishments to be carried out. Forced labor, for example. But it does not cover the whole field of penalty uh, with its duration as a sole principle of variation. Or rather, the idea of penal imprisonment is explicitly criticized by many reformers. 
because it is incapable of corresponding to the specificity of crimes, because it has no effect on the public, because it is useless, even harmful to society. It is costly, it maintains um, convicts in idleness, it multiplies their vices. Ar Archivus Parlamentaries 26, uh, 712, quote unquote. Uh, because the execution of such a penalty is difficult to supervise and because there is a risk of exposing prisoners to the arbitrary will of their guards. Because the job of depriving a man of his liberty and of supervising him is an exercise of tyranny. You are demanding that there should be monsters among you. And if these odious men existed, the legislator ought perhaps to treat them as murderers. Mably 338. Prison as a universal penalty is com incompatible with its whole technique of penalty effect, penalty representation, penalty general function, penalty sign and discourse. It is obscurity, violence, and suspicion. It is a place of darkness in which a citizen's eyes cannot count the victims, in which consequently their number is lost as an example. Whereas if Without multiplying crimes, one could multiply the example of punishments. One, one would su succeed at last in rendering them less necessary. Indeed, the obscurity of the prisons becomes a subject of defiance for the citizens. They easily suppose that great injustices are committed there. There is certainly something wrong with when the law, which is made for the good of the multitude, instead of arousing its gratitude, continually arouses its, its discontent. Durfrich D. Valise, 344-5. Okay, just going to take a quick break and go get my drink. Okay, <clears throat> continuing on page 115. The idea that imprisonment might, as it does today, cover the whole middle ground of punishment between death and life uh, penalties was one that the reformers could not arrive at immediately. The problem is the following. Within a short space of time, detention became the essential form of punishment. In the Penal Code of 1810, between death and fines, it occupies in a number of forms, almost the whole field of possible punishments. What is the system of penalty accepted by the new law? It is incarceration in all its forms. Uh, indeed, comparable to four principal penalties that remain in the penal code. Forced labor is a form of incarceration. The convict ship is an open air prison. Detention, reclusion, imprisonment for the minor offense Offense are, in a sense, merely different names of one of the same punishment. Read Re Musat 185. Uh, quote unquote. And the Empire decided at once to translate this imprisonment envisaged by the law into reality. According to the whole penal, uh, pen penal, P E N A L, oh, I'm starting to lose it here, administrative geographical hierarchy at the lowest degree associated with these justice of peace municipal masons de police uh, um, French, three French words there in each um, arrondissement masons de arrêt excuse me in each department department a masin de correction uh, at the summit several Massions centrales for convicted criminals or correctionals uh, serving sentences for over one year. Lastly, in the few ports, convict ships. A great prison structure was planned whose different levels would correspond exactly to the levels of the centralized administration. The scaffold where the body of the torture criminal had been exposed to the ritually manifested force of the sovereign 
the punitive theater in which the representation of punishment was permanently available to the social body was replaced by a great enclosed complex and hierarchized structure that was integrated into two very bodies of the state's apparatus. A quite different maternality, a quite different uh, physics of power, a quite different way of investing men's bodies had emerged. During the restoration of the July monarchy, there were a part of a few exceptional moments between 40,000 and 43,000 prisoners in French goals, approximately one prisoner per 600 inhabitants. The high wall, no longer the wall that surrounds and protects, no longer the wall that stands for power and wealth, and the medi medicultually, uh, let's see, M-E-T-I-C-U-L-O-U-S-L-Y, sorry, I can't pronounce that word, sealed wall, uncrossable in either direction, closed in upon the now mysterious work of punishment, will become near at hand, sometimes even at the very center of the cities of the 19th century. The monotonous figure, monotonous figure, at once material and symbolic of the power of punishment. Already under the consulate, the minister of the interior had been appointed uh, to investigate the different plans of safety that were already functioning and which could be used in different towns. A few years later, sums had been um, allocated for the construction in keeping with the power that they were to present and serve of these new castles of the new civil order. The empire used them, in fact, for another way. C.F. de Cassis, a less extravagant but more obstinate economy, continued to build them throughout the 19th century. In under 20 years, in any case, the principle so clearly formulated in the constituent assembly of specific appropriate effective penalties constituting in each case a lesson for all became the law of detention for every offense of any importance except those requiring the death penalty. The theater of punishment of which the 18th century dreamed and which would have acted essentially on the minds of the general public was placed by the great uniform machinery of the prisons, those network of immense buildings was to extend across France and Europe. But 20 years is perhaps too long a chronology for this conjuring trick. In, it may be argued that it occurred almost instantaneously. One had only to look at the bill for the criminal code presented in the Constituent Assembly by Lee Pelletier, the principle stated at the outset is the need for exact relations between the nature of the offense and the nature of the punishment. Physical pain should be inflicted on those who commit crimes of violence. Okay, so he's repeating himself here. Um, hard labor on the idle, shame on those who degrades, degrade its souls, but the severe penalties actually proposed at are three forms of detention. The cahoot in which the penalty of imprisonment is augmented by various measures, solitude, a deprivation of light, restrictions on food, the gene, in which these ancillary measures are attenuated, the lastly imprisonment proper, which is reduced to simple confinement. The diversity so solemnly promised is reduced in the end to this gray uniform penalty. Indeed, at the time, there were um, deputies who expressed surprise that instead of establishing a natural relation between offenses and penalties, a quite different plan has been adopted. Quote, unquote, so that if I uh, betrayed my country, I go to prison. If I have killed my father, I go to prison. Every imaginable offense is punished in the same uniform way. One might as well see a physician who has the same remedy for all ills. Cart bound 618. This prompt substitution was not confined to France. It was to be found to a great or lesser degree in other countries. When Catherine II, I actually read about her last week, in the years immediately following the, tre the treaties des delices et des 
Benice gave instructions to the commission entrusted with the task of drawing up a new code of laws. Begaria's lesson on the specificity of variety of penalties was not forgotten. It was repeated almost word for word. It is a triumph of civil, civil liberty when the criminal laws derive each penalty from the particular nature of each crime. In this way, all our arbitrariness ceases. The penalty does not depend on the caprice of the legislator, but on the nature of the thing. It is not man who does violence to man, but the man's own actions. Article 67. A few years later, Beccaria's general principle served as the foundation of the new Tuscan Code and for the new code given by Joseph II to Austria, and yet both legislations made imprisonment modulated according to its duration and augmented, in certain cases, by branding or the use of irons. An almost uniform penalty, at least 30 years' detention for an attempt to the sovereign's life for counterfeiting and for murder with robbery, 15 to 30 years for voluntary homicide or armed robbery, one month to five years for simple theft, etc., etc. But this colonization of the penalty by the prison is surprising. It is because imprisonment was not, as one might imagine, a punishment that was already securely established in the penal system, just below the death penalty, at which naturally occupied the place left vacant by the disappearance of public torture. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop here to go get my drink, and then we're going to do another 10 minutes, and then I'll be the end of this week's video. One moment. Okay, now continuing for the last part of the video. In fact, imprisonment, so this is now page 118. <clears throat> and on this point, many countries were in the same situation as France, had only a limited and marginal position in the system of penalties. This is shown by the texts themselves. The ordinance of 1670 does not include detention among the uh, penes afflictivus, or serious penalties. Perpetual or temporary imprisonment was not doubt included among certain local customers and practices. CF, for example, Coquit, quit, C O Q U I L L E. But contemporary writers maintained that it was falling into the disuse together with other forms of torture. There were formerly penalties that are no longer practiced in France such as writing, in, writing a condemned man's penalty on his face or forehead and perpetual imprisonment, just as one no longer condemns a criminal to be exposed to wild beasts or sent down the mines. Rociade de la Combre, 3. In fact, it is certain that imprisonment had survived tenaciously as the punishment for less serious offenses, according to local customers I'm sorry, customs and practices. In the sense, Sal Solitig spoke of the light penalties that the ordinance in, of 1670 had not mentioned. Reprimand, ad, admonition, banishment from a certain place, satisfaction to the injured party, and the term of imprisonment. In certain regions, especially those who had more perverse their legal peculiar peculiaries, uh, the penalty of imprisonment was still widespread, and his and this had its difficulties, as in the recently annexed province of Rosillon, R-O-U-S-S-I-L-O-O-N. Yet despite the dis or divergencies, uh, jurists had firmly had firmly to the principle that imprisonment is not to be regarded as a penalty in our civil law. Sir Bilion, uh, 1095, however, one does find in Serpilion the idea that the rigor of imprisonment is the beginning of a penalty. Its role is rather that of holding a per person and his body as security. Al condindios hominis non ad 
puniros, as the tag has it in the sense the imprisonment of the suspect has a role similar to that of a debtor. Throw imprisonment, one has securely, security for someone, one does not punish him. This was the general principle. And although imprisonment sometimes serves as a penalty, even in important cases, it does so essentially as a substitute. It replaces the galleries for those women, children, and valids who could not serve there. Uh, the sentence of imprisonment for a term or for life is equivalent to being sentenced to the gallery, the, the galleys, like the guillotine. In this equivalence, one can see clearly through the emergence of the possible connection. But for this to take place, the prison has to change its judicial, judicial status. It is also necessary to overcome a second obstacle, which for France at least was a considerable one. Imprisonment was especially disqualified for his role by the fact that it was, in practice, directly bound with arbitrary royal decision and the excesses of the sovereign power. The Massionis de Force, the general hospitals, the king's orders, or the orders of the police magistrates. Letters under the king's private seal obtained by notable or by families constitutes a whole repressive practice juxtaposed with regular justice and more usual opposed to it. And this extra judicial imprisonment came to be rejected by both classical jurists and reformers. Prisons are made by princes, said the traditionalists like Sir, Biel Sir Bilen, can't pronounce that guy's name, S-E-R-P-I-L-O-O-N, who sheltered behind the authority of Judge Boshir, although for reasons of state, princes are sometimes inclined to inflict this penalty. Ordinary justice makes no use of this kind of sentence. Sir Bilion, 1095, quote-unquote. Detention was described by the reformers in innumerable statements as a figure and privileged instrument of disposition. What is one to say of those secret prisons conjured by the fatal spirit of monarchism, reversed in the main either for philosophers in whose hands nature has placed her torch and who dare to enlighten their century, or for those proud independent souls who lack the cowardice to keep silence of the ills of their country, prisons whose gloomy doors are opened by mysterious letters and swallowed up forever its unfortunate victims. What is to be said, even those letters whose masterpiece of ingenious tyranny, which overthrows the privilege of every citizen to be heard before he is judged, and which are a thousand times more dangerous for men than the invention of Phalaris, Bristot 173. No doubt these protests coming from such diverse sources are directed not at imprisonment as a legal penalty, penalty but at the legal use of arbitrary, indeterminate detention. Okay, almost finished here. Nevertheless, imprisonment was seen, generally speaking, as branded by the abuses of power. And many rejected um, it as incomparable with good justice. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there, guys, for this hour-long video. Okay, so that was excerpts all the way up into page 119 of Michel Foucault's Discipline and Punish. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you like the excerpts and go ahead and go online or maybe your local bookstore to go pick up a copy of this book. It's highly interesting. So thank you once again. This is Pastor Sean and God bless.